Father, we just praise you, O oh God, and we worship you, eternal God and Father. And we just magnify your holy name because your name, O oh God, is above every name. Your name, O oh God, is a strong tower, Lord, for the righteous to run to it and they are saved, O oh God. There is no other name, my God, but yours. So, Father God, we just want to exalt you one more time. We just want to praise you one more time. We just want to give you all the glory and all the honor, Lord, because you're worthy of it and more, oh God. Father God, we thank you for everything that you have done throughout this worship, oh God. And Lord God, as we're about to hear from you, oh God, humble me now, oh God. Oh God, let your word go forth, my God, without hindrance, oh God, that your name, my God, may be exalted and glorified. And Father God, I pray that the hearts of your people will truly be blessed by your word. Father God, we just praise you and we exalt you and we give you all the glory. Humble me now, Lord. Humble me, Jesus. That you may be exalted, God. We give you all the praise, oh God. And we give you all the glory in the mighty and matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Standing on the promises of God. Oh, it's so sweet to be able to stand on the promises of God. I will not hesitate but to entitle this message, shift your focus from the problem to the promise. Shift your focus from the problems to the promise. And in Psalm 23, the word of God says, the Lord is my shepherd. He is shepherd for us saints. He is father he is God, he's provider, he's protector, he's everything. It says, I shall not want. It said, he makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me besides the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil for God is with me his rod and his staff they comfort me God prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies he anoints my head with oil my cup runs over surely surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. And I know a lot of us know that psalm. We were taught it when we were children. We can recite it. But it's deeper than just reciting that psalm. But it's to meditate on what God is saying to us. Recently I had a situation and I've been having this problem for a long time and I saw that the problem was starting to consume me because you see that's what problems do yeah. problems come to consume you mm -hmm. so that you can argue when you wake up it's the problem when you go to bed it's the problem when you're having conversations it's the problem and it can make you become anxious and fearful and worried word be anxious for nothing my God he said be anxious for nothing but in everything in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be known to God problems when you focus on the problems you can miss the promise when everything that you see is everything that is going wrong you can miss the things that God has already predestined and promised you. We have to think about the God that we're talking about here. The word of God says that God has magnified his word above his name. So every promise of God is sure. Because there's another scripture that says that God is not man. That 
ye should lie for the son of man that ye shall repent. So when we're faced with our problems, and sometimes it's hard, I'm telling you because I walked it. It's hard when you're waiting on God for the promise and it seems like it's never going to come. It's hard when you're waiting on things that God says is going to happen and you're putting God's timetable according to yours because that's the problem. You see, we want it to be done now, but it's sometimes it's not the time. And while we're waiting on God and everything is just going crazy, we want to run. We want to make our own plans. We want to come up with a plan B. When God has already spoken what he's going to do. And that's what the enemy does. That's why we have to wait on God. Because when these problems start, and we're focused on the problem, we can miss the promise Amen. or delay the promise even for our cause problems that should have never happened because we didn't wait on God. You see, when you're focused on something that's a thorn in your flesh, something that just makes you feel miserable when God has given you peace. Imagine that you know that it's the devil because God has given us his peace, but the enemy doesn't want us to have peace because when you don't have peace, you can't really worship God the way you are supposed to. You can't go after God because it's on your head. You can't put it down. And that's not what God wants for his people. And we have to be able to identify when we are focused on a problem and can't put it down. We have to be able to see it and say enough is enough. And be able to say, God, I am giving this to you. Give it to God 100% and don't pick it up. Because by doing that, we are saying that we are believing everything that God says. The word of God says that faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. So when we wait on God like that, we're saying we're having faith in God and we're believing in his promises. The word of God said in the beginning was the Lord when God spoke the world into existence. So we have to think about the power of the word of God because his promises are his word. And we just said that he puts his word above his name. So if with the word of God, the earth was formed, the worlds were formed when God said, let there be light, the word of God says it was so. So whatever God has promised you, it's already done. It is so simple. It is so simple, but the enemy raises up things in our lives that make something that is so simple seem so impossible and so far-fetched. God said, let there be light. And it was so. So if God promised anything, it's already done. It is already done. There is no question about it. We shouldn't doubt it because it is done. But the problem is when we're faced with a problem the promise seems like it's never going to happen. When we're faced with that situation where God already said listen, this is what's going to happen. I'm going to take you here. I'm going to do this for you. You're going to walk here. You're going to do this. But when you're in it you're not seeing that you're going to walk there and this is going to come to you. So you get consumed by the problem and you start to doubt God. And what the word of God says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because those who come to God must first believe that he is God and he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So saints of God let us not be consumed by our problems. I'm telling you, it was a revelation for me because I had a problem. And it was just there, stealing my joy and just there. Until God said by his servant, give it all to me. Put it all on the altar. Leave it there. You see, from the moment I did that. I have a peace and a joy 
that no one can steal from me. And that is, that is what God wants for all his children. That's why Jesus said we shouldn't worry about anything. Because when we worry and we stress and we focus on things we cannot change, it robs us of God's peace and his fellowship. That's what the enemy is. He is a thief, he's a thief and a robber. And he comes to destroy. And he wants to destroy your peace. Because the word of God said, let any man come to God and ask for anything and doubt. He's a double-minded man and he can't get anything. So if you're anxious and you're scared and you're worried, when you pray, you're not going to be praying by faith. You're going to be praying and say, I wonder if you might hear and I wonder if you... When the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable, you got to claim the word of God. You got to believe the word of God. That's why the word of God said we have to meditate, absorb God's word so that you can anticipate that whatever you're going through, I am trusting in the word of God because it's going to be well. Nothing bad happens to a child of God. The word of God said, all things work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. The 23rd Psalm says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow, all our prayer, it's just a shadow. Let me tell you something because there's a great promise. The word of God said, I will fear no evil because God is with us. You see, we have to believe the word of God. And I love the word of God in Isaiah 43. It said, hear, O Israel, he who formed you, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I love that word. So if God has redeemed you, what do you think he won't do for you? What problem can be greater than the fact that God has redeemed you? From death to life. What other problem you think you're going to face on this land that is going to be greater than God redeeming us? So if God redeemed us and gave us life, eternal life, my God, what else don't you think that God is going to do for you? What problem you think you can ever come up against that God won't have an answer for? That is the God that we serve. He says that when we pass through the waters, he'll be with us. So when your problems start to rage like a water, oh my God, and it comes like it's going to overthrow you, to speak the word of God into your situation. You have to, listen, this is power. The word of God is alive. And it is by his word he spoke the world into existing and it was so so when you're faced with the waters of life that want to overflow you you have the word of God to say what it says the word of God says when the waters come he will be with us when the rivers come they will not overflow us when the fire comes it will not burn us. But it is time for us to align ourselves with the word of God and speak God's word into our situation. Yes. That's what the power of God is. That is the power of his word. He has given us that power. Amen. So we should be walking in that authority instead of complaining and talking about the problem. Children of God, we are the redeemed of God. Do you understand that? The word of God says that if I be for you. Yes. So if God is for us, what problem can be against us? We have to go through things. Jesus says it. But he said we have to be of good cheer because he has already overcome the world. Yes. Yes. The word of God said his grace is sufficient to keep us. We got to believe God's word. It is simple, saints. It is simple. I'm telling you, the answer is in the Word of God. Amen. The answer for all our problems, 
all our struggles, all the things that keep us up at night and keep us in, in just misery. <laughs> the answer is in the word of God because God's word is sure. Nothing else. You can't depend on nothing or no one else but the word of God. And it is for us to believe and to receive the word of God. In the word in Proverbs 3, 5-6 it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. That is our problem. When our problems come, we like to lean on our own understanding. And that is why it's dangerous because when we're trying to fight a problem that we don't even know what we're fighting against, we're going to lose. We need to trust a God that can see the end from the beginning. A God who has everything and everyone in the palm of his hands. We have to ask God to help us to surrender everything to him so that we can be victorious. I'm telling you, saints, I, I have walked it. I have. I have. And God has given me a peace. I'm telling you, I have a peace. You see, when God, when you turn your eyes from the problem to the promise, that's how you can pray for your enemies. That's how you can bless those who persecute you. That's how you can walk what God says because now you have relinquished it. Yeah. You take it out of your hand and give it to God and you trust in the word of God. We're going to touch on the word of God because you have to see what happened because I want to touch on Sarah for a little bit because you see Sar Sariah at the time before her name was Sarah she was a woman who could not have children. And let me tell you something, in those days, being barren, you were reproached. People treated you like something is wrong with you, that you cannot bring forth children for your husband. So when, you, when we read in Genesis 16 that after God, because remember when God in Genesis 12 told Abraham to leave his country, he's going to take him to a land and that his descendants are going to be a great nation and that he's going to have descendants as the star of the sky and Abraham is like, but I don't have a child. I don't have a ear. At one point, Abraham said to God, will my servant in my house be my ear? And God said, no, one that shall come to your body. So God gave Abraham a promise that he was going to have a son. A child, right? But his wife was going through her own struggles because she's the one that society was looking down on because she was the one who couldn't do as a wife should be able to do. And the word of God said that time passed and still, Sarah was barren. She has not been able to give Abraham a son. And where is the promise? What do you do when you're waiting for the promise? And it's not coming. And the word of God said, Sarah came up with a plan B. Plan Bs can be dangerous, yes. saints of God. Yes. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> plan Bs <laughs> can be very dangerous. Stick to plan A. And plan A is whatever God says. <laughs> you don't put yourself where you don't need to be. If God says it, he's going to do it. God told Abraham, I am going to make you a great nation. Ah, your descendants, if you can number the stars in heaven, that's how your descendants are going to be. But Sarah could not look beyond what she was going through. She couldn't, she can't, I can't see that promise, Lord. I'm seeing the fact that I'm barren now. I'm not seeing no nations and no kings and no descendants like the sand of the seashore or the stars in heaven, as she said to her husband. Give me a child through my, my servant. That wasn't a part of God's plan. That was never 
a part of God's plan. Mm. And Abraham conceded. Mm. You know, sometimes I wonder why he conceded. Because you know what? He had the promise. And that's why we have to be very careful. Mm. That when God promised you something. And you have, whether it's a spouse or a child. Or whoever is in your midst can't receive the promise. You hold on to that promise. Amen. You cannot allow anyone Amen. to cause you to go against the promise of God. Amen. Amen. You have to be grounded in your belief of what God is going to do. Yes. Because oh. you're going to have people yes. who cannot see beyond the problem. Right. Right. You're going to have people who all they can see is the problem. And they're going to come to you and say, how long you're going to wait? I'm tired of not being able to have a child. Are you going to remember it was with Rebecca, Rachel, when Jacob, when she was barren and she said to her husband, give me a child now or I should die. Mm. We have to trust God. Amen. And we have to trust God in a way that even when those closest to you mm -hmm. think that you're crazy, for believing the promise of God that seems impossible, you are going to hold on to the promise of God. Amen, amen. Because once God says it, it is done. God doesn't speak anything that's not done. Once God speaks a thing, it's already done. But it's just between when we are going to get it. So the word of God said that Abraham did what his wife said, and we know what happened. We know Ishmael came forth and we know the people that came forth from that and now we have a strike because you hear what God told Hagar your his hand is going to be against all peoples and the all people's hand are going to be against him so you see what happened chaos. chaos because that's what will happen when we try to help God out doesn't that sound crazy we want to help out the Alpha and the Omega we want to help out the God that knows the end from the beginning. That is crazy. Mm -hmm. But when our problems is on our head, mm -hmm. let me tell you something. We start get antsy. You know, we start want to make plans and to do things. We ought to be still and wait. That's why the word of God said, be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that whatever God has spoken, it will come to pass. Be still and know that God has your best interest at hand. Be still. That's the problem. And it's true. Because there are times you don't want to be still. You want to run. You want to hide. You want to scream. You just want to get out of the problem. But if we wait on the Lord, Amen. if we can just wait, yes. Yes. the word of God said, David said, I would have lost heart unless I believe that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. He said, be of good courage. Wait. We ought to wait on God because I'm here to tell you that. You cannot come up with a plan that's better than God's plan. You cannot, no matter how you might think, you can strategize and you, you have it all together. Your plan could never come close to the plan of Almighty God. So this is why we ought to wait on God. We ought to ask God if we see with trouble with anxiety and fear and worry and want God. Ask God to restrain you. Ask God. Be real. Say, God, restrain me like handsome so I don't do anything, so I don't go before you. Because, let me tell you, that's what the enemy wants you to do. Because he already has some traps for you. Because, you see, whenever we go before God, there is always going to be some problem. There is always going to be some things that God did not have for us. But because we did our own thing, 
we have to be careful. The word of God, I'm going to fast forward. I'm just showing you the promises of God. Because we do know that Sarah did get the son of promise. Isaac, and we know how it all went. And we read, we fast forward to Exodus, to Numbers this morning. When we saw that the children of Israel were now going to go into the land of promise. That he told Abraham about generations before. That's the God that we serve. That's the God that we serve. Whatever he says. You have to believe God. Saints of God. You have to believe the word of God. The word of God says that heaven and earth will pass away. But the word of God will stand forever. So you can stand on the word of God. Amen. Here were Abraham descendants now. After God delivered them out of Egypt. With a mighty right hand. And now he's bringing them into the land of promise. And God said send the spies to go check out this land. That is flowing with milk and honey. Go check it out. Because I have given it to you. It is yours. And they came back. And all they saw was problems. Oh there are giants there. There are people who devour their inhabitants. We see the Amalekites and the Jezebites. People who God has already said that. I'm going to disinherit them because that land is yours. But yet when they went there, mm -hmm. all they saw mm -hmm. was problems. Yes. Mm -hmm. You ever see that? Mm -hmm. You ever see that God is trying to do something for you or take you somewhere and all you seem to see is what you can't do and oh I don't want that and that's not what I see for me and can you see better than God? Can you see in the spirit can you see the end to know why God is allowing you to walk this path mm. and the word of God said they went and it's so shocking to see that these people that God has done this mighty work for could not look beyond these so called giants and believe that the promise that God told Abraham how many hundreds of years before this was the fourth generation. So this is years. Abraham got that. And he told it to Isaac. And Isaac to Jacob. And Jacob to the 12 tribes. And now here were the descendants of the original 12 tribes. Now going to inherit that promise. God's promises are sure. It says the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Whatever God says, he is going to do it. And it is for us as children of God to receive that. Listen, if you... He cannot help you if you cannot believe him. You have to believe God's word. You see, the enemy knows what doubt does. He knows... This is why he sends the problems. Mm -hmm. He sends the problems because he know. Listen, the devil know the word, you know. Oh, you word. say that you might not know it, yeah. but he knows the word. Yeah. So I, I advise you to get to know the word because he knows the word. And he lived in heaven and he knows the power of the word of God. And he knows that God says that those who come to him must first believe that he is God and that the word of God so we can't please him if we don't believe. Mm -hmm. So that's why he brings problems mm -hmm. because the problems will rock you mm -hmm. to your core. Mm -hmm. And when you are rocked, mm -hmm. that's when the doubt mm -hmm. and your faith starts getting weak and he knows you can become powerless because it is by faith it is nothing else it is faith that bullet of faith can destroy every problem so the enemy who comes to what Jesus says kill steal and destroy that's what he comes to do he comes to rob kill and destroy he doesn't come to do anything else only God has come to give us life yes. and to give it to us more abundantly so it is for us saints of God 
It is for us to ask God to help us. Amen. Help us to shift the focus from the problem. Learn from our brothers and sisters in the past. Those who could not see the promise of God did not get to enter the promised land. Why? Because they doubted what God said he was going to do. If you doubt it, you can't receive it. If you doubt it, because God is not going to force himself on you. He's already made the way. He's already given you the promise. It is up to you to receive that promise. It is up to us to receive the promises of God because they are sure. They are sure. The word of God in Jeremiah 29, 11, he says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you. You see, that's what you have to tell yourself. You've got to speak the word of God in your situation. I think that we don't do that enough. I think that we don't speak the word of God in our situation enough. I think we just talk about the problems and not talk about the promises. Because if you're going through anything, you should be able to find a scripture where God tells you that it's going to be okay. He said, for I know the thoughts I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. Listen to that promise. So if God is saying that, what problem am I going to be focused on when my father says he's going to give me peace? And he's going to give me hope, a future of hope. Then he further, he says, and when you call upon me and go and pray to me, I will listen to you. And when you seek me and find me, you will search for me with all your heart. God has said it. And if he says it, it is so. We are a special people of God. And it is time for us to operate like we understand who we are. It is time for us to use the word of God. Stand on the promises of God. We just sang that song that we have to stand on the promises. Because his promises are sure. Whatever God speaks is sure. Whatever he says will come to pass. Remember when Habakkuk was in his time and all he saw was problems because wickedness was prevailing and things looked crazy and what did God say right division there is a vision hallelujah make it plain on tablet that those who see it will run you see that's the thing we need to write what God has spoken into our lives when you have the problem write the vision What did God say? God says that I'm going to be the head and not the tail. God said I'm going to lend and I'm not going to borrow. God said my enemies are going to come in at me one way and they have to flee seven ways. You have to write. You have to write the promises. Hallelujah. Oh my God. Oh my God. You got to write the promises promises of God you have to write them my God because they are sure God said the just shall live by faith so when you're going through your problem the problem is this but the answer is that every problem has a solution God has already given you the solution in his promise but it's time for us to activate these promises Don't just recite them because it's easy to recite them because we've heard them. Don't recite them because that's going to do nothing for you. But you need to meditate on them. You need to absorb them. You need to feed on the promises of God so that it becomes a part of you now. So that when the problems come, you're remembering what God says. Anything that God says, you're supposed to have it documented Mm. somewhere. And you're going back to it to say, God, I see this problem, but you said in your word, this is what's going to happen. We have to do that 
saints of God. That's how we get the victory. That's how we put the enemy to shame. We resist him with the word of God. That's what Jesus did to him. When he came to Jesus with all God, Jesus resisted him with the word of God. So we ought to resist our problems with the word of God because they're faithful and they're true. And in a time like this, when you look on the news and it is bad news all the time. You don't see any good news. It is bad news. But we have good news in the word of God. Amen. When Jesus said to his disciples, I go to prepare a place that where I am, there will you be also. When Jesus promises us a new heaven and a new earth, a new Jerusalem, we have to know the promises of God. We have to believe in the promises of God. So when things get crazy, when things get to a place where we don't even know what's going to happen, we can stand firm in the word of God. Because the word of God in Isaiah 55, I love this word. It says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways like your ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word that goes forth from my mouth it shall not return to me void, but it will, it shall accomplish what I please and it shall prosper in the thing for which I have sent it. What a word. God says that whatever he says will go forth. God says no matter what you're going through, I've already made the way. No matter how it may seem, I've already made the way. It's just for you to trust me. The word of God says, God is our refuge and our strength. Yeah. A very present help in trouble. Do we just read those scriptures or do we actually believe those scriptures? Because he says that whatever he says, what a God, yeah. whatever he says will never return to him void. Meaning he won't change his mind. Yeah. That's what that means. You know, some people say, I'm going to do this for you, but then they get tired or they don't feel like it anymore and they change their mind. That is mine for you. Mine will promise you things and your weight and your weight and your weight and it will never come. But whatever our father promises, be sure that you will get it. He will deliver. So it's for us to shift the focus now. Shift the focus. God has given us the greatest gift that we could ever ask for. And that's what the word says. If he who did not spare his only son, but freely gave him up for us, won't he give us all things? So why worry? Why do we worry about things we cannot change? Mm. The word of God says that he is the author and finisher of our faith. So he begins and ends everything for us. Yeah. So we just have to anchor in him. Amen. Because if he is the author and he is the finisher, mm. I don't need to get involved. Right. I don't need to put my hand there. Mm. I don't need to do anything because he's the author. And he's the finisher. He's already made the way for me. And the word continues to say. For in Isaiah 58, 55. It says. For you shall go out with joy. And be led out with peace. The mountains and hill. Shall break forth into singing before you. And all the trees of the field. Shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn. Shall come up the cypress tree. Instead of the briar. Shall come up the myrtle tree. And it shall be for the Lord. For a name. For an everlasting sign. That you shall not be cut off. So we should be at peace. Mm. Saints of God. Amen. Receive 
God's peace. The peace that passes all understanding. Enter into the rest of God. Stop trying to figure things out. Stop trying to play God. There is only one God and Father. We can't do anything outside of God. Cast your burdens on Jesus. He said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So it's time for us to unburden ourselves. Whatever it is that we've been carrying for a long time and we all know the things that we struggle, whatever it is, today God is saying, unburden yourself. Cast it unto me and he will give you rest. Because when you enter into God's rest and you're in his peace, no matter what the enemy tries, he's not going to be able to shake you because you're trusting in the word of God. You're trusting in the promises of God. You're trusting that whatever God says, it might take a long time. Yeah. Some of us have been waiting on God for a long time. But don't give up now. Don't give up. Keep waiting. Because the promise is sure. It is sure. It is sure. It is sure. So continue to wait on God and ask God to strengthen you. If you feel like you want to give up, ask God to keep you so that you can experience the blessings and the promises of God because they are sure. And in closing, I am going to use Romans 11. Try to find it here. Romans 11. Because it is fitting. The word of God says. Romans 11 verse. Verse 34. It says. Verse 33. All the depths of the riches. Both of the wisdom. And knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments. And his ways past finding out. For who has known. The mind of the Lord. Or who has become his counselor. Or who has first given to him and it shall be repaid to him for of him and through him and to him are all things to whom be the glory forever and ever saints of God shift your focus from all your problems from everything every arrow that the wicked one has sent after you to destroy shift the focus Focus on the promise. The word of God says when the enemy comes in like a flood, Amen. the spirit of God will raise up a standard against him. The word of God says he has not given us a spirit of fear. So if you have fear, you got to rebuke that spirit because it is not from God. He has given us a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. It is time for us to start rebuking what God didn't give us. Reject everything that wasn't sent to us from God. God promises us good. Goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of God. He did not say that bad things. He said, no, I promise you good things. So whatever the arrows, they come in different form to create problems to us. Ah, return, return them to the sender in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It is time for the children of God to stand up in your rightful place and send back everything to the pits of hell where they're coming from to rob us of our peace and to rob us of our joy. It is time for us to receive the word of God says, eyes have not seen nor ear heard what God has in store for those who love him. So if you believe that God has things stored up for you that eyes and ears have not seen, then it is for us to lift our faith and to receive the promises of God. Father God, we 
We worship you, O oh God, and we just thank you that we have you as Father for us, who are shepherd, God. We thank you for your word that you have given to us because if we didn't have you and we didn't have your word, God, we would have no hope. But today, my God, because of your word that is sure and your promises that are sure, my God, we can stand victoriously, Lord God, because your word will never return to your void because they're irrevocable. Hallelujah. Oh God, we give you all the praise and we give you all the glory. Father God, let your word go forth, my God, with power. Let every heart that hears your word, my God, never be the same, Lord Jesus. Let them be resolute to receive all your promises and to reject all the problems, oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, our oh Lord and Savior. We give you all the praise, oh God, and we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. And amen. Amen.